Welcome back to the Perlerworks channel. My name is John. In this video, I'm going to be starting on a somewhat large wall cabinet meant to hold watches. It'll have double doors. Uh, I'll show a picture right here just to give you an idea. But anyways, in an effort to post more frequently for you guys, I'm going to be posting some videos that are more deep dives on specific parts of this project as I go. And then at the end, I'll post the full build video. I haven't done this before, so I want to try to just give it a shot. As an example, this video is just going to be on breaking down the rough lumber, choosing lumber, and then breaking it down on what parts of the board I want to use for specific parts of the project. So if there's anything that you guys are interested in seeing, whether it be fitting drawers, making drawers, hinges, uh, half mortise locks, things of that nature, let me know and I'll try to uh, make a video about that. So let's get started on breaking down this lumber. The first thing I want to talk about is buying the lumber at the lumber yard. Now, I probably should have done this at the lumber yard so you can kind of see the process, but I didn't have this idea until after I purchased the wood. So I'll kind of talk about what was going through my head at that time. Now, I spent a fair amount of time designing this uh, project, so I have the dimensions kind of in my head and I know specific things that are important. But you want to keep in mind how long the pieces are, how wide the pieces are, and how thick the pieces are. I know that's really obvious, but you want to know what those are so that you can best use the lumber that you have available to you. So I always like to buy as thick of a piece of lumber as I can. That's usually eight quarter. Sometimes it's going to be six quarter. I rarely want to use four quarter because there's just a lot of waste involved unless you need something that's close to seven eighths of an inch thick. So um, these ended up being five quarter boards. I don't know if that's going to be the best yield because my casework is five eighths and I have some three eighths inch dividers. So I should be able to resaw and get what I need out of it. Uh, but if not, I have some extra material, which is another point. Always buy extra. I ended up buying three sticks that are 13 feet long, which should be more than enough lumber for this specific project. Here's a better view of the type of grain we have here. You can see that the grain is running up like this. So that's quarter sawn material, which is always desirable. At least in the projects that I do, I try to get as much quarter sawn material as possible. Uh, so this is a five quarter board. I have three of them and I cut them at eight feet and five feet because they were 13 feet long. You can see this board is labeled as such five quarter, eight inches wide, 13 feet long. These boards are between seven and a half, eight inches wide, which is good because my case is going to be six inches wide or deep. That gives me some wiggle room across the width of the board to avoid things like sapwood or knots or what have you. It gives you a little bit of room as opposed to choosing you know, a six and a half inch board. That's not much room to move, especially when you consider you have to joint uh, edges as you go along the project. So I have this little shipping label here and I just printed out the different dimensions I need for all of the walnut pieces so that I can keep track of what I have and cut them as I go. Some people will lay out every specific part of the project with chalk or tape and see what they want to do. Um, I like to go piece by piece and just start cutting. I have enough extra material that I don't usually run into any issues. Um, so let's see how that goes. Okay, let's talk about what my priorities are right now when picking out what pieces go where on this rough lumber. My number one priority is the outer casework. That is the largest material in both length, width, and thickness. So I'm going to prioritize getting those pieces and then I'll work my way in towards the smaller, thinner pieces. My second priority is the doors. That's going to have the most straight grain for the rails and styles. This piece right here has the most sap wood, which is not going to be usable for the case. So I'm going to keep this uh, straight grain here for the doors. So I'll just kind of mentally keep this aside and not use it for the casework or dividers. My next priority is avoiding knots and defects of that nature. Walnut is always going to have knots somewhere in the boards. If you find a 13 foot piece of walnut that's super clear, you know, congrats, but there's always going to be little knots. So I have one here, one here, there's a big one here. There's knots throughout these boards. So I'm going to avoid those because I have enough material that's usable in the increments that I need that I don't have to worry about knots. Now, if this was a six foot long cabinet, I probably would just use knots because I wouldn't have a choice. So I would just fill it with epoxy and make it look as best as I could. It would just kind of be a part of the project. But in this situation, I can avoid that, which is a plus. So I'll start with my top and bottom panels, which are going to be the longest. Those are going to be 30 and a half inches finish length. So I want to add some margin to that. I usually add at least an inch just for being even. I'll add an inch and a half to make it an even 32 inches. So I'm looking for 32 inch chunks of these boards that I can use for the casework. Now this piece right here looks to have probably the least amount of sap as well as this board. So I'm going to try to grab my 30 inch to 32 inch pieces from these two boards. 
So I'll just go ahead and mark uh, 32 inches here. I'm just using a Sharpie for this. You can use a pencil, you can use chalk, use whatever you like, it doesn't really matter. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention is this board is already cut clean because this was from the middle of the board originally. But if this was the end of a board, I would make clean cuts with my circular saw until I got away from any possible checking. Uh, especially when the edge is painted, you might not be able to see some of these defects. So you always want to cut uh, a clean edge or end on these boards until you get to nice clear material so that you don't end up dealing with checking down the road because by then it might be too late. So this board is pretty clear. I don't see any knots on this side of the board. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark all of the panels I can get from this length and that way I'll have a nice color match on the outside case. So I'll do 32 and I'll do 62. So that's another 30 inches for a side. And then this last chunk here will be enough for another side. Um, and then I'll mark, let's see, I'll mark another 30 from this board, which will be my last side. So I'll have two sides and then a top and a bottom, and that'll be my casework. Now this is five quarter material, which is an inch and a quarter thick in the rough. It might be a little heavier than that right now. Now, I need 5 eighths inch thick material for the case, and then my dividers need to be 3 eighths. In my world, that's a little close as far as resawing, joining and planning, and getting that finished thickness. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that, especially with walnut, with how much it cups when you resaw it. This is quarter saw, so it might not cup as much, but I'll try one piece at the bandsaw and see where that leads me. It would be really great uh, if I got 8 quarter material because you have more to work with. But these five quarter boards were the best looking uh, as far as color and grain were concerned. The eight quarter material there wasn't as nice, so I, I chose uh, these instead. All right, so one thing I just discovered before cutting this material is I have this defect right here. Now this is, I don't know what it is, some sort of inclusion or knot or something. And I can see actually part of it right here, which I didn't notice at first. Uh, now this comes right at the 30 and a half inch mark. So what I'm going to do is shift my 32 inch piece over here and this will be a 30 inch piece for my side. I'll end up cutting this out and not using it and then I'll get the rest of my sides as I labeled earlier. The reason I don't want to use this is that it's on the side that doesn't have sapwood so I want to avoid the sapwood which means I need to use this edge. And I don't know how deep this goes. I don't know what it's going to look like when I cut into it. It could fall apart. It could be stable but it's probably not stable and I don't want this looking at at me at the front edge of my cabinet. I don't want to see that. So we're going to avoid that in this project. All right, so let's talk about how I break this material down. I use a circular saw. This is just a uh, corded, rigid saw. Bought this when I was working out of my parents' garage and I needed to break down large amounts of lumber for the first time. I used to have a miter saw, but I just can't justify the space it takes up, especially when you consider you might need a miter station for it to be as useful as it can be. Uh, so I just couldn't justify that space. I ended up selling it and uh, now I just use a circular saw to break down my lumber. I have a one and a half inch piece of MDF that's just two three quarter inch pieces glued together. And you can see all these cuts here. That's just where I make my rough cuts. I'll just uh, use a speed square here and run my circular saw against it. And that way I can put this away when I'm done breaking down lumber and it doesn't take up as much space as a huge miter saw. So I'll go ahead and label that side, AKA S. I'll slide the board down and do my next cut. This is 32 inches, so I'll label this TB for top or bottom. I'll decide which one's the top or bottom later after I plane it up. And this last remaining piece is 32 and a half, so that'll be another top or bottom. And then I'll get my last side from that other board. All right, so I'm over here at the joiner and I've postponed uh, rough cutting the rest of my material because I want to make sure that I can get what I need for the outer casework before moving forward. What I'm going to do is put a clean edge on here and then I'm going to rip it to rough width at the table saw so that it's less material to have to resaw. I'm only going to have to rip off about an inch or so but that's just a little bit less material to worry about cutting at the bandsaw so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, I initially wanted to see if I could get 
uh, my casework and my dividers from this one board, but I think it's gonna be cutting it a little too close and I don't wanna risk it. So what I'm gonna do is resaw this to three quarters of an inch thick in the rough and then my whatever my off cut is will be used for my grid work that will hold the watches in the case. So that'll be just a quarter inch material that I'll need in the end, that should be plenty. Uh, and I'll end up getting my horizontal and vertical dividers from other boards that I'll resaw in half later. So here are the edges that I just ripped at the table saw. I know that my jointed edges were clear and sap free. And then these edges here are, for the most part, sap free. I have a little bit of sap here that crept in, but I can always flip that over and use this side as my edge. So what you're looking at here is the front or back edges of my casework. And I'll go ahead and resaw these at the bandsaw and see what we get. I have to change out my bandsaw blade so I can resaw a little bit easier, so I'm taking this 3 inch blade off and I'm going to fold it up. So if you're curious how to fold it, just hold it like this, put your foot down at the bottom, and then just slowly twist it up, and it'll just kind of fold itself up into the coil. So tape it up and store it. All right, so this was a test piece, although I will be using it for dividers. Uh, I didn't want to do a test on my actual case pieces, so you can see that I resaw it in half, but you see both ends are touching, and then you have this eighth inch gap in the middle. So that's the tension that was released as I cut the board in half, and walnut and some other species uh, are notorious for that. I used some quarter-sawn sapelia in my last project, and that went much easier. There was no cupping or twisting when I resaw those boards. So. That's just something you have to be on the lookout when you're using different types of wood. Um, you're going to have to joint this board now and it's curved. So you're going to have to make sure you leave enough thickness that you can joint and plane that down to your final thickness while getting rid of that um, bowing. So for my case pieces, I'm going to, after learning this, I'm going to resaw them a little bit thicker than I was uh, earlier. So I'm going to maybe go closer to like. Uh, seven eighths or so, so that I have enough extra material to joint and plane away, just so that my boards are flat and square when I mill them up. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video and this part of the build. I have my outer casework, my divider material, and some of my grid work material all rough milled and ready to be taken to the joiner and planer and table saw to be taken to their final dimensions. Now, I think this was a pretty successful milling operation. I didn't run into any huge issues. Some of those boards did uh, bow a little bit when I resaw them, but I have enough thickness that I can get them down to what I need at the joiner and planer. That's why it's always good to do some test cuts. It's always good to leave some extra material as far as the thickness is concerned, um, because you don't want to get too far into a project where now I gotta go buy more material, the color and grain won't match up, and those are just other issues that will affect the project when it's finished. So. 
Right here I have my casework material. I did run a couple of the pieces over the joiner just to see what it would look like. And I'm pretty pleased with what these look like so far. There's no sapwood in any of these four boards. The divider material here is um, a little bit thinner because it's gonna be thinner material. And there's a little bit of sap in a couple of the pieces, but there's ways to work around that when we get to that part of the project. And I might share that if I remember to. And lastly, these are the off cuts from these pieces. And these will be perfect for milling down to a quarter inch thick for the grid work to hold the watches. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you guys have any parts of this project that you might be interested in seeing, whether it has to do with hardware like hinges, knobs, uh, the lock mechanism, or other parts of the woodworking aspects of it, whether that be... All right, that was some pretty loud thunder, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Whether it be um, having to do with the doors, hanging the doors, uh, doing the wraps for the doors, the glass aspect of this project, which I'm a little nervous for, uh, just let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to respond to them and see if it fits into the schedule as far as getting this project done. So, uh, as always, thank you guys for watching, and if you wanna see how this project is going as it's going on, follow me on Instagram at Perlworks. All right, see you guys.